Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. In the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 11th of December. Fresh anti citizenship amendment bill protests erupt in northeast India. Pakistan's Hafiz Said indicted on terror financing charges. And one dead scores injured in attack on key U.S. military base in Afghanistan. And now for all the details. Protests against the contentious Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019 have fled in various parts of India, including the ethically diverse northeastern provinces. The bill seeks to provide Indian citizenship to non-Muslim minorities from Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. Fresh protests erupted in northeastern Assam province on Wednesday as thousands of students from different universities, colleges and common people came out on the streets and staged protests against the contentious Citizenship Amendment Bill 2019. The proposed law seeks to give citizenship to Buddhists, Christians, Hindus, Jains, Parsis and Sikhs who fled Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan before 2015. Protesters fear that the bill will primarily benefit the illegal Bengali Hindu migrants from Bangladesh who have settled in large numbers across the region. We present government but they have destroyed all the faith by imposing the illegal migrants from who are uh, from the Bangladesh and West also the other countries. Therefore, we strongly oppose this bill until and unless we give our life, we will always um, impose this bill each and every one of our who are the indigenous Assamese people will always stand against this bill. We condemn this bill. In neighboring Tripura province, scores of people, including women, also launched anti-citizenship amendment bill. Police detained some women agitators for protesting against the bill. Meanwhile, India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party pushed for final parliamentary approval on Wednesday as Interior Minister Amit Shah tabled the bill in the upper house Rajya Sabha. Shah defended his government's move, saying the new law only sought to help minorities persecuted in Muslim-majority countries contagious with India. Opposition parties, minority groups, academics and a U.S. federal panel have contested the bill, which for the first time provides a legal route to Indian citizenship based on religion. In a big boost to India's space-based surveillance, Indian Space Research Organization, or ISRO, on Wednesday, successfully launched radar imaging satellite RISAT-2BR1 from southern Andhra Pradesh's Sriharikota. Nine foreign satellites from Israel, Italy, Japan and USA were also launched on board the PSLV C-48 rocket that was on its 50th mission. RISAT-2BR1 satellite is meant for applications by the military and various fields like agriculture, forestry and disaster management support. ISRO Chief K. Sivan thanked his team of scientists on the successful launch and laid out the path for more launches in the future. I am extremely happy to declare the 50th PSLV vehicle, PSLV C-48, successfully injected RSAT-2BR1 and nine customer satellite precisely into the 576 kilometer orbit. In is from Pakistan. A Pakistani court on Wednesday indicted Islamist militant Hafiz Saeed, the mastermind of deadly 2008 attacks in Mumbai, on terror financing charges. The indictment came ahead of a world financing watchdog Financial Action Task Force meeting early next year to decide whether to blacklist Pakistan for its failure to curb terror financing. An anti-terrorism court in Pakistan on Wednesday indicted Islamist militant Hafiz Saeed, the mastermind of deadly 2008 attacks in Mumbai, 
on terror financing charges, a government prosecutor and defence lawyer said. The Counterterrorism Department of the Punjab Police in July registered 23 FIRs against Saeed and his accomplices on the charges of terror financing in different cities of Punjab province and arrested the Jamaat Dawa chief. He is detained at the court Lakpat Jail. Saeed is a founder of lashkar e a militant group blamed by the United States and India for the four-day Mumbai siege in which 160 people were killed. The dead also included several foreigners, including U.S. citizens. The indictment came ahead of a World Financing Watchdog, Financial Action Task Force or FATF meeting early next year to decide whether to blacklist Pakistan for its failure to curb terror financing. Moving on, Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan's aide on information and broadcasting, Firdaus Ashikawan, has said the government cannot allow Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz leader Maryam Nawaz to fly board without any concrete reasons. Maryam, daughter of former Premier Nawaz Sharif, had filed a petition seeking removal of her name from the no-fly list to visit her ailing father in London. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan's Special Assistant on Information and Broadcasting, Firdos Ashik Awan, on Tuesday said that the federal government cannot allow Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz leader Maryam Nawaz to fly abroad without any concrete reasons. Addressing a press conference following a federal cabinet meeting in Islamabad, Firdos said Maryam's application was under consideration of federal cabinet subcommittee. She, however, hinted that the government was not willing to strike off the travel ban over weak grounds. This came as the Lahore High Court had directed the Interior Ministry to decide within seven days of a request from Mariam seeking removal of her name from the no-fly list as she wants to travel to London to see her ailing father, former Premier Nawaz Sharif. Mariam was arrested by the National Accountability Bureau on August 8 in a corruption case. She was granted bail on November 4 by the court which ordered her to furnish two shorty bonds worth millions and surrender her passport to secure her release. Scores of Baloch and Sandhis who were living in exile in various parts of the world held anti-Pakistan protests on Tuesday to mark the International Human Rights Day. The protesters expressed concern over the gross human rights violations by the Pakistan army raised pro-freedom slogans and urged the international community to intervene. A large number of Baloch and Sindhis who are living in exile in various parts of the world held anti-Pakistan protest on Tuesday to mark the International Human Rights Day. Members of Baloch Republican Party and Baloch Republican Students' Organization in South Korea's Busan city raised slogans against gross human rights violations by the Pakistan Army and urged the United Nations to take action against the abduction of women and children in Balochistan. <laughs> ऑर्गेनाइजेशन के ادارے ہیں انسانی حقوق کے کہ وہ اس ظلم زیادتی کے خلاف आवाज उठाएं और दुनिया के उन तमाम ممالک کو جو انسانیت پر یقین رکھتے ہیں جو جمہوریت پر یقین رکھتے ہیں اور یورپی یونین یونائیٹڈ نیشن اور دنیا کے جتنے دیگر ممالک ہیں ان سے پرزور اپیل کرتے ہیں in London, the Sindhi Baloch Forum also organized a demonstration to make the international community aware about a deteriorating human rights situation in parts of Pakistan. Protesters carried placards with slogans, Stop Human Rights Violations in Sindh and Balochistan, as they shouted pro-freedom slogans. Pakistan has Balochistan in the policy in the country in which Baloch women and Baloch children अगवा किया जा रहा है रोजाना की बुनियाद पर तो यहां पे हमारे मुजाहिरे का मकसद दुनिया को यह बताना है कि पाकिस्तान एक इंतहाई खतरनाक मुल्क है न सिर्फ सियासी पॉलिसी के हवाले से अपनी सियासी फॉरेन पॉलिसी के हवाले से बल्कि इंसानी हुकूक के हवाले से भी ह्यूमन राइट्स एक्टिविस्ट हैव लॉन्ग बीन हाइलाइटिंग पाकिस्तान्स प्रैक्टिस ऑफ एनफोर्स्ड डिसअपीयरेंसेस एंड एक्स्ट्रा जुडिशियल किलिंग्स a report by Baloch National Movement last month revealed that as many as 28 operations were conducted by the Pakistan Army in Balochistan in October alone, as a result of which 30 people forcibly disappeared, 
while 25 dead bodies were found in the region. In news from Afghanistan, an explosion near the largest U.S. military base in northern Afghanistan occurred on Wednesday, killing at least one person and wounding more than 60 persons. The latest attack came as peace talks resumed between American officials and Taliban representatives in Qatar to end years old long war in Afghanistan. An explosion near the largest U.S. military base in northern Afghanistan occurred on Wednesday, killing at least one person and wounding more than 60 persons. The attack near the Bagram Air Base came as peace talks resumed between American officials and Taliban representatives in Qatar. The attackers targeted a medical facility being constructed to help the Afghan people who live near the base, the NATO said in a statement. U.S. President Donald Trump had visited the airbase recently, during which he said that he believes the Taliban is ready for ceasefire. However, there was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack till the last reports came in. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Murals add colors to building walls and streets that would otherwise go unnoticed. In order to beautify public spaces and make them more pleasing to the public, Sri Lankan citizen youth groups have been painting colourful murals across the country, many of which pay tribute to Sri Lankan culture, history and wildlife. In order to beautify public spaces and make them more pleasing to the public, Sri Lankan citizen groups, including students and professional artists, have been painting colourful murals across the country. Volunteers across the country were seen painting colourful murals on empty walls and underpasses. Many of the murals pay tribute to Sri Lankan culture, history and wildlife. Sri Lankan President Gotapaya Rajapaksa has welcomed the initiative of the young artists, saying that he is proud of them. The eye-catching murals have injected life and colour to Sri Lanka's urban landscape, with pedestrians and commuters welcoming the change. Sri Lanka has a tradition of street art with murals often adorning the walls of Buddhist temples and public schools. Maldives Foreign Minister Abdullah Shahid arrived in New Delhi on Wednesday to attend the 6th India-Maldives Joint Commission meeting scheduled to be held on Friday. Shahid, who is leading a multi-sectoral delegation, will be meeting Indian leadership including his Indian counterpart S. J. Shankar during his five-day India visit. This comes days after India handed over patrol vessel Kamyab to the island nation in an event which also saw the inauguration of other key development projects covering a wide range of sectors aimed at bolstering bilateral ties. Relations between two neighbours have vastly improved after Ibrahim Mohammed Saleh took over as the Maldivian president last November. It is important to have a joint commission in order to have our bilateral relations uh, on a more structured uh, manner. So we will be reviewing, Dr. Jayashankar and I will be reviewing the work that has uh, been done in the past year and also set the agenda for the next two years. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsLine.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.